and we are back for another episode of Syndicated Pipe Club. Hey everybody, Dave here, and also Greg the Badger Piper with me, or as I seem to recall it changing on Twitter to the uh, the handle, the at handle is the same, but you're the Wayfaring Wanderer, the Badger Piper now? Uh, yes. Yeah, I, I decided that i change it up a bit, and uh, that was a... Uh, I was thinking about doing a, kind of like a writing blog, and that was the name I was going to use. But uh, I think my uh, I'm just kind of full of projects at the moment, so it's just going to have to be put on the side right now. Yeah, that happens. When you have, have, have extra time on your hands, you tend to come up with things to do. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and they throw a throw children into the mix, and uh, there's even less. And then you start staying up later, doing things, and all the good stuff. So it's it's just what it it is. One of those things. It is what it is. I better just quickly check the oh yeah check the volume here. Oh, that's pretty low this week. Last week it was a little high at the beginning. Now it's a little soft. There we go. Yeah, that sounds about right. It's not blocking my voice or anything. I'll turn it back down a little bit. Uh, I don't use this one as often as the other ones, so I don't know exactly where to set its volume. And I didn't have time to test it before we started recording this week because I've been setting up a second mic. What happens? It's all good. And plus, I've noticed, and I'm sure I've said this before on the show and to you before we go on air. I've noticed that this thing decides to. It sounds louder to me than it actually comes out in the end. I don't know why exactly that is, but it does. Yeah. Oh, uh, did you want to throw some music on? I did. No, I guess I don't hear it. Well, that's unusual. I hope it comes through the, uh, the recording then. Because you usually can hear it. Yeah. The audio is just a little bit different tonight. I'm guessing it's just from the, the second mic or, uh, the kind of the, the change. Um... But, Second mic's uh, not running through my regular recording thing, so that really doesn't have anything to do with it. Gotcha. Because if it okay. was run, I could run it through through my through my board. Um, I've set it up to run USB, but if I had it set up to run through my board, we wouldn't be able to hear you. Right, which would make uh, having a two-person podcast be uh, <laughs> very difficult. I'm I'm pretty sure you're not moving to Canada, and I'm certainly not moving to Illinois, just so we could be right. in the same room. Well, I would advise you not to move to Illinois either, so... And vice versa. But anyway, that's totally off topic. We're not uh, a geography podcast. We are a pipe, tobacco, and TV podcast. Yes, and speaking of pipes, what are you smoking tonight? I am smoking a Rhodesian that I uh, picked up off of eBay. Get it in the frame. There we go. Um, came in with a lot. There's no marks on it. It's like a, it's a no-namer. Wait, yes, there is. They're just hard to see. Oh, wait, wait, wait. This is a yellow bowl that I had to redo. It was cracked here, so I had to do that uh, just to keep it together. And and in it, I'm smoking one of my blends, uh, the Ghost of the Black Bayou, which unlike some of my other blends, it got really dry really quick. So I'll probably have to light up again sooner than sooner than later. Ah, uh. have to try to put some more moisture back into that. Gotcha. 
What about you? What are you smoking tonight? It looks like a freehand from what I can tell. No, no, that's yes. not. Or is it? Um, yes, you are correct. It is a freehand. It is a uh, Norden freehand. It's actually the second pipe that I ever owned. Uh, it was uh, one my wife ga- gave me uh, for Valentine's Day. And it's one of the pipes that she can tell the difference of between <laughs> them all. Since she has pipe one mess. Ah, uh, pipeline this, where they all look the same, but they're really not. Right. And uh, in it, I am smoking a uh, stovepipe, uh, which I thought would be a, a nice blend to uh, place in here. Because the, the bowl for this pipe is a little bit kind of Dublin-ish. So it, uh, I figured it would be good for like a, a nice Virginia blend. Good stuff. Yeah. And actually, uh, also this weekend, uh, it was my birthday weekend. And on Monday, um, after uh, doing, uh, you know, like uh, we had we had a birthday brunch instead of like a birthday dinner. And uh, afterwards, my mom and I went to a local antique shop. And normally they don't have anything pipe, but like they normally, it's a good antique place. But they normally don't have any pipes there. They might occasionally have like a pipe rack, uh, definitely some antique pipe tins, but uh, usually you're, you're kind of out of luck if you're looking for pipes. And they had some there. Unfortunately, they were all like uh, very well loved and uh, falling apart. And the only one that I thought could have been salvageable was a, a K Woody, but who was practically a uh, nose warmer billiard and i prefer longer pipes so i was just like uh i'll uh, i'll leave these for someone else to uh to repair yeah yeah it's been a while since i've gone out and antiquing but i've got a bench full of pipes over in my little work area that i have to clean and restore i've got about half a dozen to a dozen that Need some love. I just haven't had had a chance. And we're in the middle of setting up for, believe it or not, homeschooling pretty soon. That's an interesting story for another time. Yes. So the basement's being rearranged again for the third time this year. So it's a good thing I've got this set behind me because it's disaster behind it. I can imagine it's uh, I just re- rearranging stuff once is uh, an ordeal <laughs> is an ordeal enough for me. But yeah, so let's let's talk some Airbender. Did you get a chance to, to watch episode two this week? Yes, I did. I figured you would. They're, they're, since they're since they're just short episodes, twenty minutes tops. It's a lot easier to find twenty minutes than forty five. Yeah, very digestible. So in in this week's episode, we're we're talking about episode two of you know, season one of Avatar: The Last Airbender, the Avatar Returns, and. The basic rundown of the episode is Zuko comes to the Southern Water Tribe demanding uh, the they hand over the Avatar, whom he thinks is a 112-year-old man. At which point Aang returns and uh, so basically says, I'll go with you if you leave these people alone. At which point Katara and Sokka go after him and, res- and rescue him. I'm air quoting that for those of you listening to the podcast version. And... Uh, the adventure basically begins. Yeah, yeah, all, everything comes together. It's you, know, you probably could have just made the these two episodes just like one long episode. And uh, I think on I, my Blu-ray box set, it is one long episode. They did it together, like like a little movie. Mm-hmm. So I think I think that's how they did play it up. Yeah, because they, they definitely, you know, it feels continuous. Normally, between episodes, there's a little bit of a time passing. 
Uh, but uh, yeah, no, this is like a definite like two-parter mm-hmm. for sure. Um, it, it was a good episode. You know, again, you know, we're still, you know, furthering things along. And uh, it does a, a pretty good job of developing the, the four main characters some more with Aang, uh, with uh, Sokka, um, Katara, and, and Zuko. Yes, it does. I mean, these are the characters, these are four of the five main characters that we end up with. We don't meet one of them till like next season, but these will be the the five that finish off the series, basically. Mm-hmm. Four out of five of them, and we we meet them like basically from episode one, mm-hmm. which is always and, cool. and each one, yeah, and you really get a, a good, clear picture uh, of each and every one in this episode of. Uh, what motivates them and, and their their character and that you know you have Aang who's you know the reluctant person thrust into this uh, role that he didn't ask to be in and uh, has to come to terms with that and you know it has to really come to terms with what, what's happened with since he left and uh, you have uh you know, Katara that wants to develop her airbending skills and uh, water bending. Um, yep, yeah, yes, thank you. Uh, her water bending skills, and uh, you know, uh, when they're kicking Aang out, they, you know, she's ready to go with him because she, you know, and is willing to put aside, you know, her family and her tribe to go off and uh, do this and ultimately she you know Aang talks her into staying but uh, if you know if she she had it her way right then and there she would have gone to do it Um, with uh, Sokka uh, you know he is very protective and wants to be seen a, as the protector, even though he's, you know, technically he, you know, since he doesn't have any of the bending powers, you know, he's probably like the least powerful of them all, but he more than makes up with it with his, uh, with his heart and with his, uh, you know, determination, even, you know, bravely fighting, uh, Zuko, and even though he was kind of humiliated by him, he still, you know, you could tell that he knew that he was outmatched, but where he was willing to still do his duty for his tribe and try to protect everyone. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's quite obvious in that, in this, in this episode, that Sokka's fighting skills are nowhere near what they end up being by the time the series is all over. But uh, that's just part of it. That's just part of his development. And, and he's great as a as a comic relief character. I mean, the line when, when they're just about to take it, when they're getting ready to take off of a Zuko ship and, he, and the guitar has just accidentally frozen him to the deck. I didn't sign up for this. All this magic and what? I'm just a simple guy with a boomerang. It's not what I signed up for. Yeah, that's basically his character kind of wrapped up in in a nice little catchphrase. Uh, But ultimately, he he grows into the role and into the, uh, you know, his what the events that are around him and more than, uh, you know, stands on his own, but we still have a ways to get there at least oh, yeah. you know, in the, in the end, you know, well, we'll, we'll get there. Um, Zuko didn't get as much characterization in this episode. He's more just kind of stamp playing the villain, but, uh, you know, at least 
you get to see and he's definitely determined to, to get the avatar and but at the same time he is honorable in the sense that uh, when Aang offered himself up and said uh, if I you know go with you will you leave the village alone and he upheld his uh, word yep for sure that's one thing that is always throughout the throughout the entirety of the the series a big thing with Zuko is his honor He'd make a good Klingon if this was Star Trek. Hmm. Yeah, no, there's definitely that, you know, that noble uh, race that uh, would definitely he would fit along with. And uh, another thing, too, that um, you know, one of the things that I really noticed about this episode is just really the art style. Like, it's you know, definitely cartoony, you know, it's going kind of for, I wouldn't say anime, but you, you can definitely tell that it's a little bit inspired by anime. But yet at the same time, there's these little moments where it's a bit cartoony, like mm-hmm. where Aang mm-hmm. kind of like peeking around the corner and his lips kind of stretch. Um, and in some of the, like when Zuko is fighting, uh, uh, Sokka and gets bonked on the head and you know, there's the cartoon kind of like boink sound effect uh, so it's very much you know embracing its cartoony uh, you know style and yet it's but it's not afraid to tell a serious story so I think that's really a, a, a neat approach to, to go with the show yeah, I watched uh, this episode uh, this afternoon, recording time, like when uh, my oldest was in school and had, uh, it's, yeah, my, my wife was out running some errands, so I had the two youngest boys with me, and uh, the part you just mentioned is that that boinky sound happened twice. It happened when Zuko did the same thing with the uh, Sokka spear to him, and then when you mentioned it just there. That that little sound effect was also there for when Zuko or Sokka did it re- in return to Zuko with Aang's staff, and both times my my middle boy just burst out laughing. He just thought it was hilarious, and uh, so it's one of those things. I, one of the things I liked about this show is I can watch this show with with my kids that are all like under the age of eight, and I don't have to worry about. You know, being too, too graphic in that regard, right? Because it does embrace that, the fact that it is a cartoon. Mm-hmm. And yet, it also tells them a very excellent adventure story. Mm-hmm. It, there's something in Avatar for all ages. I mean, it's a very well-rounded show. And uh, if the the announcements I've been seeing on the internet are, are an indication. There's a talk of more animated fare coming down the line. Hmm. Um, there, I think, it, un, un, unfortunately, it's with a new, it, it'll all be uh, exclusive to to Paramount Plus, apparently. But, uh, to, to, to what service? Paramount Plus. The, the Paramount's doing their own now. Mm hmm. But I think they swallowed up like uh, CBS All Access. Yeah, they did. They they, they still swallowed up uh, CBS All Access. But CBS has for years now been a uh, affiliate bought out by Paramount. But uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a shame, you know, with all these all these streaming companies it, and it, everything. It, it's starting to get as bad as the cable packages are slash used to be. Where if, yeah. you, if you want this, you have to have this channel. And if you want to watch this, you have to have this channel. I have currently three streaming services and I was determined to only have one. Yeah. 
I mean, they just combined. Uh, I used to get the WWE Network, and now it's being uh, combined with uh, Peacock, uh, NBC's uh, streaming service. And uh, it's actually a little bit of a better deal, but uh, but still, it's like I, I don't think I, I want to do it just so that I can watch, uh, you know, The Office. You know, um, yeah. but, uh, it's just, it's just all annoying. And I think, you know, I, with all this, like, I think there was like Quibi that was like launched last year and it like flopped in like a month or two. Uh, never heard of that one. So uh, if it, if it did, obviously, <laughs> I mean, I wasn't surprised when it happened. But yeah, no, the, the whole streaming thing, eventually, you know, the bottom is going to fall out and uh, it's just a matter of like, what do you want to, uh, what do you really want to watch? What are your priorities? And uh, like at this point, I'm just, I would be fine with getting rid of, uh, I'd be fine with getting rid of uh, Hulu right now, but, uh, and even, even Netflix once we're done with Cobra Kai, but, uh, you know, it, I'm, I'm just not as dependent on it. So in, in some ways it's not a bad deal. Cause really you could just get like one service if that's the one you want and live off of it. But it's just, yeah, it's just ridiculous. It almost makes you want to go, okay, I have Google Play because I do everything with Google. They sell stuff. Let's just buy all of the stuff and do it that way. That way I have exactly what I want and I don't have to worry about spending the money on multiple services. Because if you think about it, if you're spending the money on multiple services, by the time you're, you're done, you know, paying... Oh, 10 bucks for Disney, 10 bucks for Netflix, 10 bucks for Paramount, 10 bucks for um I'm assuming Hulu is somewhere in that general 10 to 15 dollar range like everything else per month. Yeah, but I well, I, I think you get a discount if you get Hulu, Disney Plus and ESPN, which I don't need ESPN, so I'm immediately out of that deal. <laughs> yeah. We see we over here in, in Canada we don't get deals like that because we can't get Hulu or I don't think we can get any access to the ESPN one. So we have to either use our own ones that are over here or the international ones like Netflix and Disney Plus. Which is fine because, you know, we can get a lot of stuff that way. And uh the uh the one run by Bell Media, Crave, is uh, basically I can get like the stuff that you would see on Hulu. That's where I get it. It's on Crave. Just however the deals were made, that's how it worked out. But uh, yeah, it's it's just a mess of a nightmare trying to navigate all these things and then there's of course the free ones that have some oddball stuff on them that you might want to watch sometime but those ones are okay to have sitting there because you're not paying for them right and like with us too like we have uh, amazon prime so yeah that one okay. I, I never think about that one because it's included in your amazon prime um membership fee the only time you have to pay extra if you want to go in into their little uh um if you want to take a foray into their channel packages that they they came up with which if you wait long enough you can just use them free every once in a while so i'm currently doing that right now and catching up on some things using a a free trial on one of them that i would already used a free trial on before and then they go hey he hasn't used this for a while let's offer him a free trial again and uh See if we get them back, and I, I I just wait for those. And oh, okay, now's the time for me to catch up. So I'm currently catching up on some shows. I'll probably cancel it at the end of the month. Yeah. <laughs> just keep letting me offer it for free. Right. 
not a bad deal. <clears throat> I'm trying to think of anything else for Avatar. Um, this is another one of those straightforward episodes where it's just a fun episode to watch, and uh, we're not really deep into the into the stuff that you know the meat you can talk about, like that's some of the things that happen, you know, closer to the, about the middle of the first season. And in season two and three, where where all the deep stuff is, where you, where you can really start talking. So having a tangent off into streaming services, yeah, it's good filler because we kind of mm-hmm. need it for this episode. No, definitely. But to, again, like uh, you can already tell that it's going to be a fun series just with the the fight sequences and the. Uh, the fun uses of uh, bending abilities. Oh, and again, this, like my my favorite thing that drew me that one of the things that drew me to Avatar originally was when I was uh, taking karate. Um, each bending style has its own martial art that's attached to it. Um, the Airbender style is a form of uh, kung fu, I believe. Um. I can't remember what the other three are, but they picked four specific styles for for each one that, from real life, that would mimic what they wanted the uh, four nations to be. Yeah. I've always wondered that. I'll have to look it up. Because the style I was learning was very, very close to the... To, uh, the uh, the earth bending style, like the deep stances and whatnot that they, they use for the earth bending is something that I was learning to use. So I can actually, I can actually do some of those moves in real life because I was taught them properly. Mm-hmm. Of course I can't throw the earth, but I can pull off the moves a little bit. It's been a while. I'm kind of rusty, but it's, yeah. it's one of those things. Once you learn it, you don't forget it. Mm-hmm. Right. But at the same time, and I'm not going to tell my kids this, if you can actually translate those cartoony movements into their real life counterparts, you're going to be a little deadly because they're based off of real martial arts. For sure. And that's a, just a great attention to detail there. Mm-hmm. That's nice too, because you don't have to make up a fighting style. You can just kind of look at what's there and use it as a, a guide. Yeah, because I think they used a uh, form of uh, Tai Chi, a form of Taekwondo, something very close to Shotokan Karate, which is what I was use, was learning. I can't remember, for the life of me, I can't remember what they used for the Fire Nation. But there's so many different styles out there, like they could have made 15 nations and been able to pick a martial art for each one. Absolutely. That's just fascinating. I think that's all I have. How about you? Yeah. In regards to the show. Yeah, absolutely. Like really, really, really fun episode not much in regards to talking point but we'll get there it's gonna yeah. we're gonna we're gonna start uh start seeing a little more good soon in the next few episodes start getting into the spiritual aspect of uh the avatar and the going into the spirit world and we're gonna start learning what the avatar state is pretty soon and because we we didn't. We don't. Technically, if you haven't watched the show through at all, you you don't know it. But you see Av- the Ang Ang go into the Avatar state a couple of times because he's in the Avatar state when they discover him. Right. And then he goes into it when he gets knocked off the boat and into the water and water bends without knowing what he's doing. But yeah, there's all kinds of stuff that you can 
you can talk about once that stuff gets started, starts getting in in full force. Yeah, no, and I like to the little glimpses of what uh, they'll be able to kind of do in the future, like with what Aang and Katara were uh, doing in the fights. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think it's a pretty good place to call it. I've got nothing else. It's a nice light episode, short one, and hope you guys enjoy it. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. So if you want to follow us throughout the week, you can always find me on Twitter at Dr. Alien 201. And uh, the show is out there at Syndicated Pipe on Twitter. No more Instagram because it just ticked me off. Um, Greg, where can they find you? Yes, uh, on Twitter, you can find me at the underscore Badger Piper. And you can also find me on Instagram as the Badger Piper. And that's where you can kind of find my stuff. And uh, you can follow my uh, pipe smoking blog at uh, the Badger Piper at wordpress.com. And if you don't want to uh, go through the details of just, uh, you know, 180 characters or whatever it happens to be in, in, in the social medias for their little thingies, you can always send us a me an email at reverseflashtime at gmail.com. Our nice recycled from the Flash days. Ooh, speaking of the Flash days. We should talk about that sometime. I oh, want to sure. talk about it. So I watched the I watched the latest episode on Netflix. Maybe I'll do a solo on that one. Who knows? But we'll get to it because it was an awesome episode. If you really want, if you really want to, don't wait for me. Go to Flash TV Talk and listen to Bone Bell talk about it. It's, it's awesome. I've heard a. Uh, I know um, Superman. Uh, the Superman show started as well, and uh, it's supposed to be pretty good. Yeah, I'm gonna have to see if I can find out where I can watch that. I'm not surprised though, because the actor that plays Superman is very likable. But anyway, all that aside, everybody, hope you have good smokes, great entertainment, and we will talk to you next week. Chat with you later. <laughs>